Today we have the latest on a major Gears of War 2 update, and we'll show you the best places to visit in World of Warcraft. Plus, we've got reviews of Mushroom Men, Metal Slug 7, and the latest Neverwinter Nights 2 expansion. Next play starts right now. Place, TV's most watched video game show, and that includes humans now, huh? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Not I'm just Adam robots. Sassler. And I'm Blair Herder. Adam, before we start, I gotta say, this stand smells like Olivia Munn. It, it should have cleaned this before. This is gross. Don't touch it. We're coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. Now, coming up, we go all access with Velvet Assassin, a female driven World War II stealth action game from Gamecock. Wrap your head around that. Plus, we review Metal Slug 7, the addictive fast-paced series has ditched arcades, and you'll find out if it was a good idea. Then we reveal what it's like to put balls on someone's head when we look at the life of a mocap coordinator in Will Work for Games. But first, let's get all the day's top headlines in our gaming update. First up, the console wars continue with Microsoft celebrating a successful Xbox 360 holiday sales season. The software giant revealed consumer spending on Xbox Live increased 84% year on year with lifetime revenues at over $1 billion. Thanks in part to the November launch of the new Xbox experience, the system now has over 17 million Xbox Live members worldwide. The Xbox brand also had its best holiday season ever in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. To date, a little over 28 million million consoles have been sold worldwide. Microsoft now claims to have an 8 million unit lead over Sony's PlayStation 3 console. Meanwhile, Sony has confirmed PlayStation 3 hardware sales saw an increase of more than 130% for the holiday season. In a UK PlayStation.com article, SCEA President David Reeves stated the most important thing for his company is to start turning a profit, unlike other companies, and says they are still on target to achieve that goal. Sony's plans for 2009 include a handful of new exclusive releases and a music and video download service, which is expected to become available later this year. Next, good news for Gears of War 2. In a post on the official Gears of War message boards, Epic Vice President Mark Rain announced a new patch will be released later this month. It will address ongoing issues with multiplayer bugs and glitches. Rain says the update will stop players from being able to wield invisible shields, gain infinite ammo, and melee opponents through walls. Best of all, the update will include new achievements related to downloadable content. Finally, a listing at Xbox.com has revealed EA is planning to release a Skate 2 demo via the Xbox Live Marketplace this Thursday. The sequel to EA's Tony Hawk Killer will be available at stores for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 on January 21st. All right, that's it for today's gaming update. Now for the latest news, be sure to check out our website, g4tv.com slash xplay. But now let's head it over to Blair, my favorite NPC. Give me a quest. Come on. That's what they do a lot. <laughs> the Neverwinter Night series is for hardcore, old-school D&D players who are considering dipping their toe into computer games. And Obsidian Entertainment hopes to breathe new life into Part 2 with the brand new expansion, Storm of Zaheer. There's plenty of changes, and find out if they work in this review. You thought it was finished. You thought you had tied up all the loose ends in the Forgotten Realms. You thought you had mopped up all the evil in all the lands. We got some bad news. You were wrong. Turns out there's still some life in the two-year-old Neverwinter Nights 2, which recently added a second expansion, Storm of Zaheer. There are a few changes to the gameplay, but Storm of Zaheer is mostly just an excuse to get back out questing. Welcome back, traveler. First, though, I should probably catch you up on what's been going on in the Forgotten Realm since the King of Shadows has been defeated. As the world slowly rebuilds, a new cult is emerging that worships the recently added to the canon god Zaheer. You start your adventures on a boat, in a storm, which in an RPG can only mean one thing. Shipwreck party! Now's no time for humor, you great idiot! One of the new aspects to the game is the ability to tailor make every member of your party. Oh sure, you could just use one of the stock pre-made adventurers that the game provides. But then how can you max out one of your cohort's intimidation skill to get whatever you want? 
But by far the biggest addition to the game is the new Overland map, a 3D world you have to navigate to get from place to place. The map shows the location of enemies in the region, allowing you to either avoid them and carry on, or pull out your sword and do battle. Another less winning feature is trading. While other games have successfully integrated a system of commerce into magical adventures, it just feels tacked on in Storm of Zaheer. I say get me off the trade routes and back on the beach killing Velociraptors. But hey, I like fighting beach Velociraptors. You might like grain trading. I would say yes. Still, this is a worthy addition to Neverwinter Nights 2. There's more to explore and plenty to plunder, and that's all we need for a good time. Clearly you have an eye for quality. Neverwinter Nights 2 Storm of Zaheer fights off four kobolds out of five. It's easy to get lost in Northrend, the new land introduced in World of Warcraft's Lich King expansion. Now, players might find themselves at odds with the game rather than smoke you like the crack that it is. In a special X-Play tour guide, we look at all the places worth checking out. Now the Wrath of the Lich King has been out for almost two months and the furious race to reach 80 is slowing down, you might find yourself with a little spare time. Oh sure, you could gear up for your 25-man next Ramus run, but wouldn't you rather take the time to get to know the wide world that flew by in your haste to reach the level cap? Yes, Shaloshka. I thought so. The main hub of Northrend is the floating city of Dalaran, a mystical metropolis ruled by a magocracy. For all you non-poly side majors, that means it's run by a democratically elected council of mages. Hey, it beats having your leaders decided by a group of privileged electors chosen haphazardly by district. For fun and games, nothing beats Northrend. If you're a lumberjack, that's okay. You can organize some great lumberjack competitions in the Grizzly Hills. Just visit the Blue Sky Logging Ground. You can even take a relaxing trip down a log flume. If you're not into flannel and the Pacific Northwest, the Storm Peaks have a peaceful outdoor sculpture garden at Thunderfall. For more forbidding views, fly up to Ice Crown Glacier. When it comes to architectural design here, the Lich King has decided that less is more door. You can get stunning vistas of spiky ironclad fortresses, but beware, the local populace doesn't take kindly to trespassing. Northrend isn't all ice and snow, though. Check out Shalazar Basin for a nice tropic getaway. Be sure to take a trip on Air Nezingwary. Best part about the trip? They don't charge you extra, no matter how many frost weed bags you have equipped. Outside of vacationing, there are some amazing quests you might have bypassed in grinding up to 80 that are definitely worth working through. One of the best is the Wrathgate questline that starts in Dragonblight and spans over 25 separate quests. All the effort is rewarded, though, with the Warcraft's very first cinematic cutscene. Rise up, sons of the Horde! If you've been focusing on your main character and haven't created a Death Knight yet, shame on you. The starting area only takes two or three hours to run through, and it's among the best designed areas in all of Azeroth. Arthas! After your world tour, you deserve a nice long soak in a hot tub. Hordies get their own private club at Camp Winterhoof in the Howling Fjord. Everyone else has to settle for the geyser fields in the Borean Tundra, but it's much less exclusive. They'll let anyone get in there. If you want to accurately capture the pitching technique of Cy Young Award winner Tim Lincecum for MLB 2K9, you can do two things. One, you can hire a bunch of snooty animators to replicate his movements, and while you do that, snooty people wear monocles, and monocle people aren't trustworthy. Or two, you can get a mocap team and let computers do the heavy lifting. We show you guys what it's like to do the latter in World War for Games. If you've been watching X-Play for a while, and if you aren't, start. But if you have, you've probably seen a bunch of athletes dressed up in cute little skin-tight outfits reenacting all their greatest moves. But what goes into these motion capture sessions? What does it take to have a career in mocap? I'm a motion capture coordinator here, and that means that I actually get my fingers involved in everything, every aspect of the motion capture process. That means suiting up the actors, putting the markers on their body, recording the data, processing, and then solving the data, which means converting it from those white dots you see on the screen to actual skeletal data. 
Did anybody get a job in motion capture? You don't need a college degree, do you? I actually have a computer science degree from Georgia Tech, and I specialized in computer animation, specifically with uh, motion capture, so it was kind of a perfect fit for me. I love sports and I love video games, and I was doing motion capture, and when the job came along, it was a perfect fit. So how can Joe and Josephine Gamer get their feet into this world? If you want a job in video games, it really depends on what you want uh, to do. If you want to be an artist, for example, then having an art sort of background is obviously helpful. If you want to be a programmer, then obviously an engineering, programming, computer science type background is more helpful. Really just chase your dreams and keep trying. I mean, it's really hard to sort of break into this industry. You have to get a little bit lucky, I would say, but then once uh, you prepare yourself properly, whether it's by going to school or by just building up some sort of art portfolio, you really just have to keep at it. I actually tried for about two or three years before I actually landed this job, so just perseverance. You really got to keep pushing. Keep pushing, X players, and you too can become a motion capture coordinator. The sky's the limit. Coming up on X Play, we go all access with Velvet Assassin. Go behind enemy lines with some sexy World War II stealth action. Then get on the leaderboards tonight. Pro Gamer T Squared will have the Gears of War 2 tips that will keep you breathing for one more match. Plus, the score wars have hit the Wii. Don't miss the brutally honest word on Mushroom Men. All this and more. Keep it here. Yeah. G4X. Welcome back to X-Play. To say World War II games are tired is, well, that's entirely accurate, actually. But Gamecock's Velvet Assassin mixes things up by basing it on a real-life female protagonist. And instead of walking forward to trigger waves of Nazis, you've got to use stealth. Find out more in this all-access look. There's a new operative committing international espionage. Velvet Assassin puts you in the role of virtual fiction Violet Summer. We got the latest from Replay Studios' Inga Mittendorf about their upcoming World War II spy thriller. We had the idea to do a World War II game, so we were doing a lot of research on the game. We had two people searching for us on everything, so they found out about this true woman, this true character, her name is Violet Sabo, and yeah, she was driven by rage. She lost her husband before their child was born, and this was her reason to go behind enemy lines and fight for the British MI6. In addition to being based on a real person, Velvet Assassin stays true to history and incorporates authentic environments. We wanted to show a lot of historical facts. We used original locations, tried to reconstruct those areas from aerial photos we had all over Europe, different places, different locations, everything looks different. It's different inspired by atmosphere, colors, dramatic, so it's very nice. And don't worry about learning the language. Gamers will have a few options to help you survive. If you, for example, want to be the murderer, then you have the opportunity to do the close kills. If you don't like that, then you have the opportunity to sneak by some of the soldiers. So whenever you try to go through the game without killing, you get special achievements as well. I hope that everybody likes it the same as I do. So early 2009, go for it, Xbox 360 and PC. While that gamer tag guy claims he has all the tips for video games, I myself am more inclined to listen to programmer T Squared. He has pro in his name after all. He's the current MLG champ in Halo 3, so when Tom Taylor tells me how not to get my ass handed to me in Gears of War 2 horde mode, I'm all ears. What's up everybody? I'm Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor. But you may know me as T Squared. T Squared. I'm captain of the MLG team, straight ripping. I have the Gears of War 2 tips. Gears of War 2 tips. They'll have you bragging like a pro. The boom shields are the most important tool you have at your disposal in horde mode. Make good use of them, and you can survive on many of the maps. On day one, you can place a boom shield with the path curves around to the sniper spawn. The grinders and boomers will get stuck. E, Z, pick it. Another tip for day one is use the Hammer of Dawn sooner rather than later. The quicker you use it, the faster it'll respawn. 
And when it comes to the later rounds, it's essential to drop the hammer on them. Another map you can make good use of the boom shield is on Pavilion. Let's do this. Head to the small alcove. That's opposite to where the mortar is. Plant that boom shield at the entrance of the alcove. Then start planting shells into the horde. When you run out of ammo, don't worry. There's a crate right outside with unlimited ammo. One note of caution, your shield will disappear after each round. But don't worry though, you'll find it in its original position. You should have plenty of time to get your ass over there, grab it, and then run back to the position before the locusts start swarming. Now for all you people out there saying, well, what happens when the locusts kick down the shields? There's an easy way to keep them from booting them down. Flat them backwards. That means have the handle facing the horde. It'll keep your barrier from getting bowled over. Make good use of the boom shield in horde mode, and you'll be wave after wave of locusts in to the ground. The Metal Slug series is known for running, gunning, and having to avoid thousands of enemy bullets. You need to be twitchy, like a kid whose Ritalin has run out and thought taking speed was a good substitute. Well, Metal Slug 7 is the first game in the series made exclusively for the DS, abandoning arcades altogether. Find out if this was a smart move in our review. Put down the salt because you're about to get slugged. Actually, we're talking about Metal Slug. And get this order to go because Metal Slug 7 is available on the DS. It's a new game, but the premise is the same. One soldier against an army of bad guys. And unlock other installments in the series, Metal Slug 7 is a one-man job, which means no simultaneous co-op. But the rest of the game remains true to the series. It comes as no surprise that when you cram a game onto the tiny DS screen, you're gonna forfeit some graphic quality, but it actually looks pretty good considering. However, when things get really hectic, it can't take the heat, so you're prone to slow down. Play it on easy and you stand a decent chance of making it through the game's seven missions. And if you're up for a real challenge, go ahead and step it up to medium. But if you're a fan of the grown men crying combo, then you're in luck because the hardest level will do just that. One mode gives you a series of specific challenges. You might need to rescue as many POWs as you can, or avoid getting crushed by falling debris for as long as possible. But these aren't nearly as good as the cool game. But on the whole, not much has changed since Metal Slug 6. Fans of the series will appreciate that it's another Metal Slug game, but our main complaint is that it's just another Metal Slug game. Metal Slug 7 gets a 3 out of 5. Be the first to know the technological future when G4 takes you inside CES 09 Live. We are covering this year's most innovative gadgets, gear, and gizmos live from the motherboard of all tech shows. Our extensive live coverage of CES 09 Live starts Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, presented by Acura Advance, only on G4. Now check out G4TV.com right now. That's G4TV.com slash CES. For updates. Yeah. And when X Play returns, you gotta throw the CS in the end so people know. Yeah. They'll get confused. Yeah. yeah. When we return, we're gonna review Mushroom Men The Spore Wars for the week. We'll be back. Welcome back to X-Play. On the list of things I don't like, you can find fungi right between loud children and estate tax. Gamecock was hoping to change my mind with Mushroom Men, a wee platformer about civil war on a minuscule scale. Today, I report that they did not. Mushroom Man The Spore Wars begins with a mysterious meteor hitting Earth, transforming all fungi into miniature sentient warriors. But by the end of the game, you'll probably find yourself wishing it had actually destroyed the planet. Yes, that's right. This innovative platform game for the Wii is an unfortunate misfire. You play as Pax, the last of his Mushroom Tribe who must restore peace to the warring fungi factions. You'll get to jump, glide, solve remedial puzzles, and engage in deeply repetitive combat. 
Unfortunately, the camera frequently seems bored by the action as it wanders lazily at critical moments. The one bright spot is the way the game recontextualizes everyday items. By casting you as a tiny hero in a large world, every chair or garbage can becomes a monumental obstacle to conquer. But the sparse narrative never truly hooks you the way it should. And at a mere five hours, this is more toadstool than mushroom. Or to be more specific, Mushroom Men the Spore Wars is a two out of five. Tomorrow on X-Play, we've got the exclusive world premiere of the new prototype trailer. This is the only place you'll see Alex Mercer unleash his fury onto Project Blackwatch. Plus, we'll preview Dragon Age Origins and reveal the new fantasy RPG's unique combat system. The game's lead designer sits down with X-Play to explain all. Then, take up arms and help Jason bring his wife back to life. We review Rise of the Argonauts and enlist some of the most famous names in mythology. And Kristen Adams will be here with a Fallout 3 cheat that will net you the best weapons in the game. Eight mini nukes at once, anyone? All this and more. Don't miss it. Oh, that Fallout 3 fat man. It's pretty. Best gun ever. All right, up next, more of us, another X-Play.